It's Bill and Jessica show. Good morning. Mostly sunny today. High of 92. All right. So I want to give you some updates on some trials going on. Uh, and Court TV is all over them. Mm-hmm. All I right. Need a scoop. First up, it's the Robert Durst trial. Mm-hmm. And that's like the main trial they've been covering. I didn't mm-hmm. know too much about it until the other day. Here goes uh, Vinnie Politan from Court TV kind of giving you a background. It's about the old guy who ended up killing his wife. Mm-hmm. Well, he's on trial for that. Okay. As well as the friend who helped cover it up, who ended up knowing too much, who he was paying, and then she because she knew too much. But the trial is, I mean, it's almost like a freak show because the guy's up there on the stand. He's old. Mm-hmm. Like old, old. You know, um, I, I don't know what his health is, but he's, he's like cracking so jokes. He is, he, he is old. Yeah, and he's cra- up there, like kind of being a smart ass to the he was... prosecutor. Yeah, I, I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. So, again, here goes uh, Vinny Politan giving you kind of like a little background, and then uh, we hear some audio from him up on the stand. And we have a lot of things to get to, but we're going to begin with the trial that the nation is watching right now. We're talking about the trial of Robert Durst, the Jinx murder trial, the man who was accused of murdering his friend Susan Berman, but also implicated in two other killings. And it's all part of this case that has taken day after day, week after week, and right now Robert Durst on cross-examination. And you know how that's been going. It is a, it is a chess match, a game of cat and mouse between the prosecutor and the accused killer. These are the two people who know this case better than anyone, right? Robert Durst knows knows the case. This is his life we're talking about. And then you've got John Lewin, the prosecutor, who has studied this case and and, and really made it, it seems like his life's work put into this trial. It's layered. It's complicated. But this cross-examination, unlike any we have seen in a long time here on your front row seat to justice. Uh, Today, one of the issues that came up, and remember, You have to look at the relationship between everyone here. Kathy Durst, Robert Durst's wife, goes missing in 1982. The allegation of the prosecutor is is that Robert Durst enlists the help of his friend Susan Berman to help cover up this this murder Mm -hmm. and have her make a phone call, and she knows everything. And then when the new prosecutor comes on the case, uh, uh, Janine Pirro, yeah, that Janine Pirro, uh, is on the case as the Westchester DA reinvestigating the case. The heat is on. And and prosecutors believe it's it's at that point that Robert Durst murders Susan Berman because she knows too much. Now, another part of their relationship took center stage today. As you know, Robert Durst is loaded. Tons of money. Not money that he earned. No, no. This is money that he inherited, uh, really from his grandfather, who, who made the money, then passed the business on to his father. And then Robert Durst is who he is but still worth tens of millions of dollars. So the issue of money came up. And and why is Robert Durst giving hundreds of thousands of dollars to Susan Berman? Yeah, before she goes missing Mm -hmm. and he's accused of murdering her, he's paying her. Paying her, paying her, paying her, paying her, paying her, her. yeah. So, and, you know, people are saying, oh, that's to get her to shut up and not say nothing. Right. You know, and then he ends up well, allegedly, it's all alleged, but she ends up disappearing, ends up murdered. Let's take a look at the back and forth. Again, this is the cross-examination of the accused killer. And this back and forth is crazy. You'll know which one is him, the old you guy. You had said that you had given Susan Berman a lot of money over the years. Um, how much money do you think you gave her? $275,000. So you know the exact amount? Wow. That's an approximate amount. And when did you first start giving her money? When she left New York and moved back and moved to Los Angeles. And you agree that was after your wife Kathy disappeared, correct? Correct. And would you agree, Mr. Durst, that if, in fact, Susan Berman had damaging information about your conduct, would you agree, if that was true, you would have an interest to make sure that she was happy? About your conduct. So he's trying to get him caught up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
about murdering his wife. And Susan Berman is damaging information about my what? <laughs> See, damaging information. my conduct. See, he, he, he's smart. He's oh, not yeah. a dummy. Right, right, right. He knows they're trying to get him caught up in this. Yes. What conduct are we talking about? Killing your wife? And Susan Berman <sighs> damaging information about my killing my, my her killing my wife. What would that what is the question? You would agree that if that were true, you would have the motivation to make sure that she was happy, that she was not angry with you. Yes. Okay. So he said yes, but the question was if she had damaging information. It doesn't necessarily mean she did right, have damaging right, right. information. If. You know, Gosh. that's how you got to look at these trials. But just wanted to give you a little update on that. Very interesting. There's a lot to this. Uh, again, the Robert Durst trial continues. Uh, his marathon testimony and his own is his, representing himself, his own defense. So he's 78. 78. That's how old he is. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Also. Uh, lawyers in the Alex uh, King, I'm not sure how I'm, if I'm pronouncing that last name right, uh, have filed a motion requesting an exclusion of cameras in the courtroom. Okay. All right. Uh, former officers King, Lane, and Theo are scheduled to stay in trial for the death of George Floyd in March of 2022. Mm -hmm. Not Derek Chauvin. Right. This is uh, the other officers who were there. But they have filed a motion to not have cameras in the courtroom, the lawyers. Regarding the trial, the second trial involving the death of George Floyd, J. Alexander King, one of the three officers set to go on trial, his attorneys have filed a motion today to exclude audio and video coverage and recording of the upcoming trial, the trial against King, Thomas Lane, and Tutal, scheduled to start in March of 2022. As you know, cameras were in for the first one, uh, uh, Derek Chauvin, but now uh, former officer J. Alexander King and his attorneys have filed a motion to exclude cameras from the courtroom in the second trial coming up this March. This is from the court filing. Due to the trial of co-defendant Chauvin being televised, Mr. King's right to present a defense in his upcoming trial has been crushed. The incredible access of the public to the Chauvin proceedings has resulted in fact and expert witnesses declining to testify for the defense. One defense witness being harassed and another defense witness being subject to professional slander. Counsel has been informed by fact witnesses that they will not cooperate or testify because the proceedings are being televised. All right. Hmm. My guess is, is that the media will still report on everything that's happening inside that courtroom, whether there are cameras or not, and will name all the witnesses. But we shall see. We'll keep an eye on that for you. Yeah, of course, the media is going to do that. Right. But he's saying that you're you're messing with the whole case because people don't want to testify. They don't want to talk. They don't want to, you know, get involved because the whole thing's going to be cameras. Right. Do or even audio. Think, he don't even want audio recordings. Do you think that that will be granted? I don't know. You don't think so? I don't know. I mean, I know of other trials, and I've heard of other people who have tried that, but... The judge did not grant it. Yeah, I don't think they're going to grant it. So, I mean, there's been other cases out there just as big as this one. Yeah. And it's been televised. So. Uh, also, uh, Josh Duggar. We've talked yeah, about what's him. What's going on with him? Apparently, attorneys for the former reality TV star Josh Duggar filed motions to seek to dismiss the child pornography charges against him. Uh, the motion asked for the dismissal of two charges and to suppress evidence in the case, including all statements Duggar made to investigators, the Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette reported. The documents filed Friday alleged prosecutors failed to preserve potentially um, evidence and that two acting secretaries of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security at the time of Duggar investigation weren't properly appointed. The motions to suppress evidence say investigators took Duggar's cell phone before he could call his lawyer and question him without his lawyer present. Duggar, who appeared on TLC's 19 Kids and Counting, was indicted in April on two counts of downloading and possessing child pornography, some of which prosecutors uh, have depicted the sexual abuse of toddlers. He has pleaded not guilty 
Duggar has been confined to the home of family friends who agreed to his uh, custodian during his release. And he is prohibited from using any internet accessible devices as he awaits trial. 19 Kids and Counting was canceled following uh, revelations that Duggar had molested four of his sisters and babysitter. Duggar's parents said he confessed to the fondling and apologized. Duggar previously apologized for a pornography addiction and cheating on his wife. So this guy's all messed up. Yeah, he is. He's all messed up. But, but he found a loophole in there, and the prosecutor is finding a way. Yeah. These are like real small little yep. little flubs. But it's sometimes like, it, it works. It's like when you get a ticket, and they spell your name wrong or something sometimes dumb. Sometimes it works, or the address, or just yeah. something. This is no bombshell here that, like, right. he's innocent. This is like something dumb where they find that they, you know— put a wrong address or yep. spell your name Proper wrong or procedure was not taken yeah come on i don't think that works as much as it used to i mean from what i've seen i i don't know i just don't think that works as much as it used is you know uh, well, we were just talking about a case though and there was a loophole and the charges were dropped it was recently. I yes. just did it. What was it? Yes. That? Um Ugh. Yeah, what the hell was the that? Heck was it was it? a celebrity, right? Yes, yes, and I was doing it with the news and Well, you know that it was something like the this. lawyer. I mean the lawyer just had his case dropped. Which one? The Which lawyer one? who represented Sormy Daniels. Oh. In New York. Okay. Uh against Donald Trump. All right. But that wasn't the one. You were you were no, doing something, it was something else. else. So charges were dropped. But yeah, if you don't follow, you know, and now they're saying that they took his cell phone. Yeah, he was not um, able to contact his lawyer. Little things like that. Uh, the appointed secretaries. Like if certain things have to happen, people get out of stuff. Okay, really do. When you have a good lawyer who knows the law and knows every single step telling you god what was that story if well, you guys remember surprise jessica me. it won't if, surprise me if something goes down with this if you guys remember jessica talking about it 302-858-5117 was, <laughs> was it a radio personality somebody something why dumb. do i feel like it was somebody that like not that we know but like probably somebody we know one of, one of our like you know celebrity friends yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, all right, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. we got a 47 ABC update on the way. And coming up, we have uh, another story about Alan West, candidate for governor of Texas. His wife got a DUI. Okay. But they say that it was all bogus. Alan West, who's running for governor of Texas, is saying that it's all bogus. She shouldn't have gotten the DUI. She's got a receipt to prove where she was, what was going on, and it was all uh -huh. all a mishap uh -huh. and he's demanding an apology and he says if you don't apologize if i win this i'm going to make your life a living right. hell so wow. that's another good one this so is good. we'll talk about that on the way it's 728 time now for power 1017